الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله علم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا حبيبنا مصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك ومجد وكرم وعزز وفضل على هذا النبي الكريم وعلى آله الأطهار ومن اتبعه بالإحسان إلى يوم الدين رب الشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Praises are due to Allah. We praise Allah. We magnify His name. And we profess faith in Him. We testify that there is no deity deserved to be worshipped but Allah and our Prophet Muhammad wasallam is a final messenger of Allah that was sent as a mercy to all mankind. My brothers and sisters, we continue with our discourse and our discussion on a very beautiful writing of Imam al nawawi that is entitled Bustan al-Arifin or the Garden of the Gnostics. In our previous sessions we discuss As-Sidq Ma'Allah Truthfulness with our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its importance and we shared some key points concerning As-Sidq Ma'Allah Imam al nawawi in the third chapter in his writing saw it fit to highlight the importance of intention and niyyah a little bit more information on the subject area niyyah than we discussed previously previously we discussed intention but Imam and now we saw it fit to have additional information inserted in his writing on the this chapter that is entitled the importance of intention and he starts to talk about how vital it is and how important it is for us to have our intention simultaneous with our actions and he said that when you desire to perform any good act and we should know this that whenever we desire to perform any good act in obedience, no matter how small that action is, you must be conscious of your intention. Despite how minute and small that action may be, that if you want to be the recipient of rewards and to attain Allah's pleasure, that despite how small that action may be, or the act of obedience may be that it must you must as a Muslim be conscious of your intention because the intention will be the determining fact factor whether your action will be accepted or not an intention should be that you intend to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you want to be the recipient of Allah's mercies and his rewards and jaza then this minute action that you do or this act of obedience that you do should be with the intent to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not for no other reason. And then he said your intention must be simultaneous with your actions. And while Imam al nawawi was a Shafi in Madhab, he highlighted 
how important it is, for example, for your intention to be simultaneous with your wudu and in the Hanafi school of thought, um, your intention is not a prerequisite for the acceptance of your wudu. But, according to Imam Shafi, it is. So he said that this include all acts of worship. All acts of worship, your intention must be simultaneous, subhanAllah, with the action. And then he says your prayer. So when you perform your salah, you must have an intention. That you're intending to perform this salah for the pleasure of Allah as a muqtadi or subhanAllah or as a uh, imam and you turn your face towards the, the qibla with the sincere intention to attain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward. And also he says your fasting should be, you must have your intention. And he mentioned that your wudu, your tayammum, your hajj, the pain of your zakat, your intention should be one that you're given this, this because this is a foundational aspect of my faith and I'm given this zakat for the pleasure of Allah and this zakat that I'm given is a haq and the right of the poor upon me so I'm fulfilling this obligation. So it should be simultaneous when you give this. And also when you give charity, taking care of the needs of your family members. That, subhanAllah, key thing that we often think that, okay, this is what you do. That a, a, a man provides for his family. And yes, a man provides for his family. You have an obligation to provide for your children and to provide for your, your spouse. But when you do that and you have an intention that this is your religious obligation and that you're fulfilling this religious obligation, then Allah will reward you. And subhanAllah, because your action is coupled with your intention. Visiting the sick. And when you visit the sick, oh, I'm, I'm visiting the sick. You should, when you visit the sick, must draw to your mind that you're doing this because it is a sunnah of Rasulullah. It is something virtuous, but it is a sunnah of Rasulullah that you're, you're, you're adhering to. And the intent of it is that while you are doing this because it is the probably the ethical thing to do when you know someone is sick you go and visit them but at the same time it is not about your ethics it is about subhanallah about pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I'm visiting the sick so I have my intention because I'm, I was told by the Prophet Muhammad wasallam in a hadith in Qudsi, when I visit the sick, subhanAllah, what happens is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith in Qudsi, O servant, will ask a servant, O, o servant, O servant of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so and so person was sick and you did not visit visited them and if you have visited them you have you would have found me there it's a very beautiful hadith that tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the servant I was sick and you did not visit me I was hungry and you did not subhanallah provide meals uh, uh, for me you did not assist me and they will say, Oh Allah, you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. You're the sustainer. And the respond of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be that subhanallah, that if you had visited the sick, 
you wouldn't find me there. If you have, subhanAllah, given the poor and the needy, subhanAllah, what is due to them? In return, it is as if, subhanAllah, you are, this is how honorable it is, that you're providing for the needy. So your intention should be coupled with the action. So visiting the sick, you should have your intention. And he mentioned a large amount of a'mal as-saliha in the section. Seeking knowledge, engaging in dhikr, visit, visiting virtuous people. That when you do that, you do that with the intention, you will be rewarded. And, you know, giving fatwas and legal opinions, all of these things, whatever you do, you should ensure that it, it subhanallah, it is coupled with um, your intention, inshallah. Also, he, he highlighted that, that whoever lacks an intention in these actions is denied great good. You are denied great good. And then he says, whoever is successful in making one has given a vast favor. We ask Allah, um, the generous, for success in this matter and in all aspect of good. Now, with that being mentioned, our Imam, he highlighted uh, some of the statements of the great scholars of Islam concerning this. And he mentioned the statement of Imam al-Shafi'i about intention. And he said, Imam al-Shafi'i said, I would like people to learn this even, even though not one single letter of it is ascribed to me. He says, I would like people to learn this even though not one single letter of it is ascribed to me. Imam Shafi also said, I have never competed with anyone with the idea of defeating him. And whenever I compete with anyone, it is only in order to show him the truth. This is Imam Shafi. On the first statement, he is saying that whatever, subhanAllah, he teaches someone a single letter, he does not ascribe it to himself. That he is saying whatever he, is, he has learned, it is for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that he does not ascribe that knowledge to him. So he is always conscious whenever he is learning, he is learning for the pleasure of Allah. And whenever he is teaching, he is doing that as well with the intention. With the intention that he wants to empower the people with knowledge and he's doing it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also the key aspect of his intention is also seen when he said that whenever he is debating with someone or having a discourse with someone that he has never seen this discourse as a competition. Subhanallah. You're having a discussion with someone. Maybe an intellectual discourse with someone. And Imam al-Shafi, he had this munadharat and discourse with many people that probably differed with him in matters concerning the fiqh and in matters concerning the deen. And he says, whenever he have this discourse, his intent is not to defeat the person, but the intent is to show him the right way. The intent is not about him showing that he is superior in knowledge to the other person, that he knows more, but rather his intent is to guide that person to the right path or to let him understand the right thing and in addition to this Abu Yusuf 
the Abu Yusuf, the, the student of Imam Abu Hanifa, he mentioned as well that I desire to teach you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you teach someone, this is a student of Imam Hanifa. He is taken from the founder of the Hanafi Madhab, Abu Yusuf. And he says that when he teaches his student, he does this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that I never sit down in an assembly in which I intend to be humble without standing up, having elevated them. And I do not sit down in an assembly in which I intend to elevate them without standing up, having been compromised. The key point here is basically, I desire to teach you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that he teaches for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this is Abu Yusuf. Then you have also the statement of Sufyan al-Thawri. And Sufyan al-Thawri, he says, I have not, I do not have to deal with anything more difficult to me than my intention. So in other words, it was challenging for him to, to some extent, um, I do not have to deal with anything more difficult for me than my intention. He tried to ensure that he is on point with his intention so that his actions will not be tainted with riya. So it means that he was very vigilant and very cautious before he engages in a particular act. So it means your intention, it purifies your actions. Your intention purify your actions from impurity which tarnish the action uh, from being accepted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, um, now the other important thing that Yazid ibn Harun, another scholar of Islam that Imam uh, and now we highlighted concerning the intention. He, he, he mentioned that the only reason intention is so exalted in the hadith is because of its nobility. And he is referring to إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ إِمْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى And other hadith that speaks about intention, specifically about this. He says the intention is so exalted in this hadith because of the nobility of, of the intention itself. And Ibn Abbas, he mentioned, man is protected according to his intention. You'll be safeguarded based on your intentions. So, when we look at this entire section, first we want, it's a few points that is mentioned in chapter 3, the importance of intention. And to summarize it, is point number one, that every good act that we do, despite how small it is, that we should ensure that our intent we are conscious of our intention point number two would be that our intention should be simultaneous with our actions and their discussions concerning this according to the shafi madhab subhanallah uh, they emphasize on this All right and it's one of the way to keep track of the actions that you do so i will say from a religious uh, um, a, a, a religious point of view in terms of you attaining your taqwa and ensure that you're in, in, intact with your a'mal in everything that you do try to recollect your intention 
inshallah and have it in your minds and in your heart that I'm about to do this act for the pleasure of Allah you're about to eat for example make your dua and recollect the thought in your mind I'm about to eat subhanallah why because I want to have health and strength and afi and well-being to perform my actions of salah when you go to sleep inshallah you say your dua have that intention there and then that you're taking rest so that inshallah you will be healthy subhanallah and you will get up for your fajr salah and you will be in a position inshallah to go and work for your family you're taking rest so try to have your intention uh, simultaneous with your actions and in point number three would be that if your if if your actions are lack of intentions this will deny you a great good and a great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the other lesson that we learn that many of our scholars of Islam Sufiya Nathawri, Yazid ibn Harun, Imam al-Shafi'i, the student of Imam Abu Hanifa and other scholars which we have quoted highlighted that uh, intentions are considered to be vital in the act uh, in the, when it comes to the acceptance of our acts of of devotion and also they spoke extensively about about the importance and the vitality of this so the mere fact that they delve into it shows how honorable uh, and important and exalted um, uh, intentions are um, inshallah, uh, in our deen and for the acceptance of our, inshallah, uh, our a'mal as saliha May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all, guide us and protect us, and grant us goodness in this life and the afterlife. Akulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sa'il mu'mineen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu 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 Allahu